good morning. Today is Monday, October 10th. It's Columbus Day. It's also Canadian Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to all my Canadian friends. But uh, today is the uh, week weekly meeting highlights, and it's part of the series for the month of October, How to Make Meal Preps Work. So this week, they're starting with How to Make Breakfast Work for You. We'll talk about that because we know how I feel about breakfast. But we always start off with how I did. I told you that I'm really not in the let's lose weight, let's lose weight mood. But I'm in the mood for let's lose weight. <laughs> so uh, the two don't kind of correlate. But but let's see how I did with that attitude that I had this past week. I'm fine with that. A half a pound loss is a half a pound loss. Um, I told you I'm not really completely yet on board with 100% watching what I'm eating, but um, I'm stepping, tiptoeing tip into that uh, realm. So I, I think that losing a half a pound was pretty good. So that put me at 243.7 this morning uh, with a half a pound loss, which I'm still in the 60s, so 60.5 loss. So I'm really proud of that fact. Um, I think now that the cooler weather, if you watch my daily vlog, I do tend to do better in the cooler weather. I don't know why. I just feel all snuggly in my, my hoodies and stuff like that. Um, I think that when, for me, when it's spring and summer and you're wearing less clothing, I'm more aware of how my body looks. <laughs> so um, I know I can kind of hide it in the, um, in the winter months behind all of this stuff that I wear, but... Um, it, it gives me a little bit more confidence. I know that probably makes no sense, but sitting in shorts and looking at fat thighs just just doesn't get it for me. But sitting in jeans and looking at my legs thinking, you know, they, they do look a little thinner, <laughs> gets me a little bit more on the mode of losing weight. So I think that um, now that the cooler weather is here, you're going to see better losses. I've, I've seen a loss the last two weeks, so I'm back on a little bit of a losing streak, so that's good. But anyway, this is how to make breakfast work. Uh, if you watch my daily vlog, you see that I'm not really much of a breakfast eater. I don't eat my first meal of the day until like 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't get out of the bed till 9.30 or 10 o'clock. So that kind of explains it. I'm just, I've just i never been one of these people that jumps out of bed and can eat breakfast right away. Um, all, the, all my whole life, I am a grazer though. That's not to say that I don't graze all day and that's why I gained all my weight. It's because I grazed on all the wrong things. You know, I might not have sat down and had a breakfast, but I might have picked up a donut when I got into work. You know, like, because there's always it was a vendor that came with donuts or bagels or, you know, sweet rolls or things like that. Sometimes they'd come with lunch, you know, and it was just, it was harder when I was working, definitely. But uh, it, it brought up the fact that I, I didn't eat breakfast, but I grazed. And so, and I still continue to do that. I think what they call it now is intuitive, intuitive eating. I think that's the word. But um, I usually don't eat till like one or two, and then I'm usually done by seven or eight. So I eat between a seven or eight hour period. Um, I don't always make the smartest choices between the seven and eight hour period. But let's see what they have to say about how to make breakfast work for you. <clears throat> the jury's still out on whether it's actually the most important meal of the day. But breakfast doesn't have to be bananas, literally or figuratively. Here's how to make your mornings from chaos to calm. I like the way they did a little play on words with the bananas. Um, to try this, decide on the basics. Decide on what you're going to do. So you decide, I'm going to eat my first meal at what time and where am I going to eat it? Uh, I, had a, I have a very, very bad habit of um, making my breakfast and sitting down in my chair and watching TV. Uh, I just bought a new piece of furniture. I bought a new chair. It's very light colored. You'd think I would have learned from the first one. <clears throat> my other chair was like a black and white stripe. This one is like a like a beige, but a very light beige. So uh, I have made the conscious decision that I am not going to eat in that chair. Uh, I have not eaten in that chair since I've had the chair. I've had the chair two weeks now, I think. I sit at the table. Uh, that was quite an adjustment for me. It really was quite an adjustment to sit and eat my meals there. I concentrate a little bit more on what I'm eating too, so because I'm not kind of like mindlessly eating while I'm watching TV. So um, I think that if I if you think that maybe breakfast isn't your first meal that you're going to choose for the day, as me, I don't choose breakfast as my very first meal of the day. Just focus on if you're going to have a snack, make it a healthy snack. I do tend to, uh, I'm trying slowly to get back to walking. I had plantar fasciitis that was diagnosed in July. My foot is feeling a little bit better. So I'm taking little, 
I have not been showing you, but I've been taking little walks. To me, they're not even like a walk. It's like around the block, which is less than a half a mile. But uh, I'm easing into work, getting back to my regular walks. I don't want to damage my foot because that was that was very painful. And especially now, since I put some weight on, I can feel it more on my feet. So um, I just think that, and so I always would go for my walk. And when I came home, I had a big green apple and a glass of water. When I've started falling away from going for my walks, I stopped eating the apple and having my water. Now I'm back to eating a piece of fruit. You know, maybe it's an apple, maybe it was a peach or something like that. Uh, eating that in the morning with some water. I'm trying to get back into that habit because that was a healthy habit. So the second thing you want to do is make a plan. So you want to say, I want to eat what and use how many points and I'll shop for ingredients when. Now, um, when I eat my breakfast, I eat a lot of berries. I I know that's a healthy fruit. I know it's got a lot of antioxidants and stuff like that, but it's also got sugar. And I know it's uh, the, I know the argument, nobody ever got fat eating berries. But... Uh, I, the berries sometimes lead me to overeating other things, too. So uh, I'm trying to cut back a little bit on that, trying to change up my menu. If you watch, I haven't been showing my food lately because it's just so boring. It really is. I eat the same things every single day. I think that if I could get a little bit braver and uh, enter into d eating different foods um, at different times of the day than I normally do, that it might make a difference. I usually use most of my points <clears throat> for my first meal, which is my brunch, or linear, or whatever you want to call it, my breakfast and lunch, because I usually eat about one or two o'clock, and that's a pretty heavy point, heavy pointed breakfast. Now I've tried to um, to try to eat like I did try like two weeks ago, eating a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or eating like every two hours. Uh, <clears throat> it just didn't work for me. I did try it. I gave it a whole week's try. It just didn't work for me because that's just not how I eat. But I think that I can try to. Um, not eat so heavy in the morning. I think that even though I'm eating later, maybe I could eat like a light brunch and then have like a light snack because I can't even call it a lunch. I just maybe a light snack and then a dinner. I have been finding that I'm staying within my points, but um, my calories are way off because I've been doing both calories and points. And I am trying to get, if I stick to my points, I find that I'm like, Less than a thousand calories a day. I don't want to be less than a calorie, thousand calories a day. So I tend to then eat more processed foods, which is not good for me. So I'm trying to figure out a way that I can look into more proteins and that because I really don't eat enough proteins. I don't eat enough proteins, but I eat too many carbs. So I have to kind of switch that around. Uh, I am working on that. Uh, people have suggested I see a nutritionist. I probably should. I really should. But I just think that they're just going to tell me to eat what I know I should eat. <laughs> so um, I, I just have to research on my own a little bit and see what I'm going to do. And um, I usually go shopping on Wednesdays. I have a pretty full pantry and I have a pretty full freezer. And I have all my condiments that I need in my refrigerator. So when I shop once a week, it's more or less just to pick up some fresh fruits and vegetables. I have frozen fruits and I have frozen vegetables. I prefer the fresh so I have the frozen just as a backup um, that um, I can fall, you know, I can fall back on. My other thought that I was going to try was having like a protein shake in the afternoon with some of my fruit. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to make a protein shake. So if somebody could give me an ingredient for some ingredients or how to make a good protein shake, I really would appreciate it. I um, I've never tried the. Premier Protein. I've never tried that. So I don't know if you need to put that in a shake. Uh, I've never put any kind of powder in any kind of shakes or anything like that. So uh, I'm open to suggestions because that might be a good alternative for me to get my protein in in the afternoon if I can come up with a good protein drink that I like. So suggestions are always welcome. <laughs> um, if it's a little bit more than you want to put into the um, description into the comments down below uh in the description box below i always have my email address and you can always reply to me or you know let me know on email and that way i can print it out so that'll help me out too so let's dive a little deeper if the only things on the breakfast menu at your house tend to be coffee with a side of chaos we get it mornings might feel rushed at best and at worst like your alarm clock is the starting gun for your 10k sprint or maybe you wake up famished grab whatever and use more points than intended that's where a little planning and strategy come in. Um, I find that the only time I wake up famished is if I've gone off my plan the day before. I think it's more of a, 
um, a trigger, like a sugar trigger that's setting me off. It's not so much that I'm hungry. It's like an addict that needs that drug or that alcoholic that needs that drink or, um, you know, just that sugar fiend that has to have some sugar to boost their skills. I've, or not their skills, to boost their metabolism, they think. I find that uh, if I'm overdoing it on the sugar, that it takes me a full week of complete withdrawal from sugar of any kind, whether it's my berries or just sugar in general, I have to get completely out of my, my, uh, my diet. And that's a hard thing for me to do. But when I do go off the rails, it's always with some sort of sugar. So, and it's not even sugar that's in the house. It's sugar that I go out and get. So, um, I, that's the only time I really, really, or if I've overeaten the day before. You would think if you've overeaten the day before when you wake up in the morning, you know, you wake up, at least I wake up and I'm not feeling all that great in the morning. But then I always think, well, if you put something on your stomach, it'll feel better. Now, maybe it would be better if I just put one or two saltines on my stomach. No, no, I go for the whole hog. You know, I think I got to have something really big. You know, like I'll make something really heavy laden, like pancakes and syrup and bacon. And, you know, it's like, not that you can't have those, but not in excess. So, um, you just have to figure out what's right for you. But if you're not hungry in the morning, it's no biggie. Research shows, research suggests skipping breakfast won't necessarily help or hamper your diet or to help your weight loss efforts, nor will eating it. But for those who want to level up or start a new routine prep, when it works for you and choose foods that you're excited to eat, this will make it feel easier to fit in a nutritious meal into your schedule, and it can help set a healthy tone for the day, which could have a positive ripple effect on other parts of your journey. I so agree with that. I just, I am not one to plan out a menu for the week or even for the next day. I, when I wake up in the morning, I kind of think of what I'm going to have for that day. Maybe I can start baby steps the day before deciding what I'm going to have the next day. So I'm a little bit more prepared for it and uh, I'll have it ready for me because then I'll know, well, I have to make sure I have this, this, and this. So uh, I don't make some last minute changes. But that's part of the um, theme for the month is how to make meal prep work for you. Uh, I do think that uh, if I prep my meals a little bit better than I do, um, try to, I have like a gazillion million recipes. I watch so many channels and I see so many things that I just think, oh, that looks really good. And then I do buy some of the ingredients for it, but then I never make it. I have to step out of my comfort zone and I have to start making it. I just do. I did find a recipe that I'm going to share because next Tuesday, the 18th, um, Joan at Joan's Pointed Plate has a Cracktober collab going on and it's Crackpot Meals. I found a very simple, easy meal. It's like it's like a sin how easy it is to make. It really is. And it's something that Jim and I do eat and we do like. So uh, I'm going to share that next Tuesday. And uh, it's well within your points. And it's so quick and easy to make. It's like I said, it just doesn't seem, why don't you make it more often, Sandy, if it's that easy? When you see how easy it is, you're going to say, why don't you make that more often? So anyway, I have 243.7 this morning with a half a pound loss, 60.5 points pounds rather 60 and a half pounds total loss i'm really proud of the fact i'm hoping for a little bit bigger gain next week um we're doing two birthdays this week my son turned 50 last week and uh, jimmy's jim's going to be 73 tomorrow uh, i have a whole crowd of people coming on thursday we're having a big 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 meal but uh, i'm going to stay within my points i'm going to plan out my day accordingly and i'm going to enjoy the day and i'm not necessarily going to worry about having cake because um like I got my comfy clothes on, which means weight loss will be a coming. So uh, let me know how you did. And once again, if you know of any uh, recipes or you can share with me for a protein shake that might work for me working in the afternoon, not working in the afternoon, but, you know, that I can work into my afternoons, I really would appreciate it. So uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, share if things somebody might like to see it. Always stay safe. I hope to see you on my daily vlog, but if not, I hope to see you here next week. Talk to you soon. Thank you.